And hello and a ho 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 everyone, it's that special time of the year, it's time for the Comic Multiverse Christmas stream, whether you're watching it right now, Saturday, live as we record this, or when you're watching it actually on Christmas, when I will probably upload this to the channel, because that means one less video I have to <laughs> upload, thank you everyone for joining us, this is one of my favorite shows of the year that I get to do with matt uh, we've been doing this show for almost 300 plus episodes and one of the nicest comments i get is hey you know thanks joel and matt i'm not home for christmas this year or i'm on the road for christmas so it's nice to kind of get to spend it with someone uh, you know just in the background just uh just talking and making me feel that you know i'm not so alone and you know what hey if we yeah. can offer any service that you know warms my heart that we can do just that absolutely absolutely and it's always fun these christmas ones as well because we, we mm -hmm. don't know we don't have to talk about like comic books or anything even though we love talking right. about comic books we don't have to do that we just talk about like weird random toys and mm -hmm. like christmas specials and all sorts of stuff oh yeah like that. yeah oh yeah it's, it's a great time it's like a vacation before our actual vacation where we can just freewheel and deal it and do whatever i feel like when you and i started our podcast career we had like a lot less of an actual uh friggin you know template to do any of this and because of that our shows would end up being friggin three hour monstrosities and unfortunately <laughs> in this in this modern age of youtube ain't nobody got time for that and the algorithm's gonna bend you over on that so i feel like we need to get a little bit more focused but you know but but for one day a year we just get to fuck around and do whatever <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so how you been matt has the christmas stress uh hit yet for you uh, a little bit, a little bit. I've got one more week of work left, and then I'm on holidays for two weeks, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, I've got all my all my Christmas shopping done. I've you know sorted everything out what we're doing for Christmas, and yeah, it's That's good. good. I'm, I'm I'm on a handle of it. That's good. Yeah, this uh, this Christmas was a little all over with me. I'm going to be visiting my dad Christmas Eve for the first time. I've actually got a little artificial tree and everything I'm going to bring. I'm questioning if I should bring my wrapping and do it at his place or if I should do it the night before. <laughs> I also got all the stuff to do my uh, Christmas baking. I'm going to make one of those uh, caramel snow cakes. I'm going to make uh, my banana pudding that I make every year. Ooh, nice. Yes, I'm very excited about all that. The turkey's taken care of. The most expensive gift I ordered came in the mail the other day. I swear I spent an entire day just answering uh, Amazon and UPS and everything. And, of course, you know, I was, like, really on edge about it because it's like, oh, this can't get lost in the mail. This can't, you know, whatever. I need to actually be there for because those guys will be so quick to leave. But, yeah, I got that under control. So far, pretty good. I got, I got to go out one more day because I got to actually split a gift for my mom with my dad. We do that every year. Normally we just get her a gift card because she hates anything we get her in terms of like sweaters and stuff. So it's like, yeah. look, here's a sport check gift card. You can get whatever you want. Yes, <laughs> gift cards are the savior. <laughs> it is. It sucks this year too. The the perfume, the expensive perfume I get her every year. They stopped making it. I discovered. I went to like every perfume store. I went to perfume Reddit to try and hunt <laughs> down a bottle of this stuff, and I still couldn't find it. I was doing my own version of Jingle All the Way, where it's like, where's your Christmas spirit? Give me the fucking Sam Sarah by Goulain, for fuck's sake. You should see if you can find, like, a bootleg one, or make your own. Get some water, well, stir in some, right? some rose petals, you know? Again, the, the shit I had to learn about perfume and scents and what makes what, apparently there is a website out there called dossier or dossier because it's french and apparently that's what they do they will bootleg you a scent basically yeah i've seen videos where like yeah they they um there's like companies that like you tell them oh i want it to smell like this this and this and they'll like just shove a bunch of shit in the bottle and and like yeah it smells like it okay yeah <laughs> But of course, to do that, you got to actually understand about perfume. Mm. And I'm like, well, I don't have enough time to educate myself <laughs> on this subject matter. I'm like, just get me something that smells kind of like it. And I had to break down. I'm like, OK, look, if I can't get you this, what is your second choice? I know you've been wearing the same perfume the entire time I've been alive. But can you pick something else, please? <laughs> Which, again, makes me feel like I'm the parent in this situation where it's like, look, they don't have any more Tickle Me Elmos. You know, what's <laughs> what's the second Tickle Me character you want? 
which uh which hey that's kind of foreshadowing actually because again if you've never watched one of our christmas shows before matt brings us the gift of bootleg knockoff monstrosities and i give you the gift of what the hottest selling christmas toy is according to amazon and better housekeeping and the people that actually sell shit you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's fun that's fun yeah <laughs> That's fun. I guess. Uh, I guess too. Before we can start, what uh, what did you want this year, Matt? What's uh, what was number one on your list? <laughs> uh, I didn't really have a list this year. Same. Yeah, I I, 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 may... I didn't really want really need or want anything. Yeah, we're we're lucky. We're at that age now where it's like, look, you know, we're making money. If we want something, we can get it for ourselves, which makes us very hard to shop for. <laughs> I I did I did make a list. But not for the reasons you would think. I made an Amazon gift mania list uh, because Bret Hart told me to. Because uh, Amazon and uh, Bret Hart were running a special promotion in Canada. If you made a gift list, you could win a prize. You could win like $500 worth of Amazon oh, credits man. or whatever. And I'm like, well, if uh, Bret Hart told me to do it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> So if people want to see that Christmas list, I'll post it later. And again, I put like some real high in the uh, pie in the sky shit there. I'm like, oh, you know, uh, this popcorn maker would be nice. Uh, hey, if I got, uh, what is it, a USB projector, then maybe I could run movie nights for the old people in my building. Uh, ooh, I, I, I need one of those fancy Japanese knives like they have in the bear. And obviously I'm going to need an apron to go with it so, you know, oh, I can so play... Yeah. Yeah, so I can play the bear when I'm in the kitchen and yell at myself, Five minutes, chef! Because <laughs> that's what I do with myself when I'm making my dinners. I like to imagine <laughs> that I'm in the bear and that I'm dysfunctional and that, you know, I look good in an apron and just smoking. <laughs> so that's what i do yes yeah, so, so i put some crazy shit in there for sure and also hey they have like a vlog camera i don't know if you've ever seen this it's one of those dealies it's uh it's like it's on a balanced uh tripod already and you press a button and it can spin around and everything a bunch of yeah, the wrestlers the I, yeah yeah a bunch of the wrestlers i watch who do vlogs apparently they have those and i'm like oh man that would be great, God willing, if I ever get invited to conventions again, because fuck me, I've been doing it all wrong at this point, trying to make a regular camera work. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's just a cool-ass gadget. Yeah. The mouse is also going in my laptop, which means I'm probably going to need one. It's really weird. The trackpad works fine, but the actual click is starting to not work. It's fine when I reset it, but it'll just randomly go out on me, and I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's a connection issue, I think. I imagine so, right? I, I was reading up on it. It's like, oh, you can, you know, uh, do this with the drivers or do that. And I'm like, I think it's just an old laptop I've had for too long. <laughs> Luckily, I have an external mouse. It's just a pain in the ass when I'm trying to edit. My trackpad mouse goes out because then I feel like a freaking caveman when I'm using one of these mouses. I'm like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't use trackpads. They're just... Really? They... Well, whenever I'm on the computer, if I'm using it just to like search the internet, yeah, sure. But like, if I'm doing something like I've had to, just because I didn't have a mouse, uh, access, I've had to do editing on a trackpad and it's mm. like the worst thing ever. Right. I, I guess you're more of a serious editor than me too. For me, it's just like two movements for you. You got to drag, drop, open, right click, scroll. So you need mm -hmm. all the extra connectivity, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I can totally see how that would be different. People in the chat telling us what they got there. Uh, Tenro 100 got a new TV. Yeah, there's some really great deals on TVs. I got my first 4K, and I am very happy about it. Nice, nice. Cowboy agreeing with you. He can't use a trackpad either. It's like a foreign language. Yeah, nice. It's weird. Too weird. And then there's that. There's that. There's those computers that have, like, the little dot. In yes. The keyboard. Oh, the little dot. Yeah, that yeah, bugs me. That's weird. It's weird. I haven't had the little dot in forever. I remember the first little dot I had, and I'm like, no, thank you. Mm. Please, please come again. I, I do not want this. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I guess with that, we want to hop into the me main meat of the show, and I can tell you what the biggest gifts are this year, and I'll get everyone's reaction on it, see mm. if we're surprised or not. Yes, yes. So, according to CNET's culture section, one of the first biggest toys of this year... 
uh, for the child demographic is apparently the Furby, but not just any Furby. This is apparently the 25th anniversary of the Furby, and these these aren't the Furbies we grew up with, Matt. These ones have Wi-Fi connectivity. Yes, it's a fully interactive Furby. Because that's what I really want. I want this thing connected to the internet, maybe powered by AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're watching my children, yeah. Absolutely. Man, that movie Mitchell's in the Machines got it 100%, right? When it's like, you know, my dark slumber begins. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying Furbies are evil. Nothing that's managed to last and stay this popular for this long is not touched by the dark forces is all I'm saying. <laughs> Can you fucking, did you think all these years later, Matt, because we were the first Furby generation, could you imagine kids would still be interested in this shit and we'd still be talking about this to this day? I, I, I not Furbies, but like the same sort of general like idea of like an interactive toy. Yeah. Yeah. The staying power of Furbies is maddening to me. I really don't get it. Maybe it's not a North America thing. Maybe they're big like all over the world. I know they were big. I don't think they are at the moment, but they were big here in Australia. Like when when they first came out, when our generation had them, yeah. It's it's wild too because like unlike all the other stuff, like, like trolls. I get trolls being popular again because they got movies and they got like Netflix shows and everything. It makes mm, sense, yeah, for you know the the band trolls to be kind of a big deal. But there's like no Furby cartoon or movie or anything else that I know. Furby exists solely on the merit of Furbies, which is just fucking wild to me. Yeah. I, I don't get it. I really, I really don't. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying I legit don't get it. <laughs> I do not get the appeal. Now, one of the appeals I do get is the next thing uh, on the best of list, the hottest Christmas toy list, 2023, is Barbie's Dream House. And, of course, it's the Barbie's Dream House from the movie. Yeah, it is exactly the same from the movie. Yes, which I imagine you got a lot of little girls wanting this this year, a lot of adult women, and a lot of collectors probably super interested in this because this was probably one of the biggest, hottest years for Barbie. That's one thing I was surprised I didn't hear about, like, where, like people, like, snatching up, like, the, the movie right? versions of these toys and, like, scalping them. Because that you happens with think... everything. You really would think the dream house is big and also the Ken doll from the movie is big too. Mm -hmm. I discovered, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which makes a lot of sense. And also very funny too, because the whole point of the Barbie movie is that no one gives a shit about Ken and he's completely superfluous. He's as much an accessory <laughs> as anything else in Barbie's life. And I love the idea that, you know, Ryan Gosling is the thing that put Ken over the edge and made him an actual <laughs> character and someone that people wanted to root for. What I am disappointed though, is they didn't really capitalize on the meme, the Barbie corporation, and they didn't come out with the Mojo Dojo Casa house. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, guys. Real missed opportunity. Make it an internet exclusive. That's fine. Hide it behind a paywall, but let me buy the Mojo Dojo Casa House is all I'm asking. Who who, who makes uh, Barbie? Is it Hasbro? Mattel. Ha Mattel, yeah. No, they, they could do, like, one of those, like, because I know Hasbro do, like, the things for, like, uh, Star Wars toys where they do, like, like an online vote and it's sort of like a fan-funded sort of mm, thing because they did that with the... Um, yeah, yeah they do that with the uh the razor crest from the mandalorian you can get like a full size oh, razor cool. crest yeah that's cool i like that a lot <laughs> chem dog in the chat saying where's my oppenheimer play set joel yeah. yeah where is the oppenheimer play set where's oppenheimer's <laughs> dream house to go along with this <laughs> just filled with booze and regret is all it's filled with and get that chair he's just naked in yeah yeah, yeah, where's that? Where's the chair? Do I got you know what the chair's a build a figure is the thing you gotta buy <laughs> all the other figures in the Oppenheimer line and then you put together the naked chair. <laughs> these these companies, man, I tell you, they really will, you know, just take any opportunity to nickel and dime you. Now after that we got something I have never even fucking heard of. Fingerlings? Yeah, these uh these look quite strange. They're little monkey things you put on your fingers, and they're saying fingerlings are back, meaning this is apparently not the first time they've been here. This is a resurgence in popularity. Apparently. They, they remind me of the, there's these things, like, in, in stores here that sell, like, Australian items for, like, tourists and stuff. You can buy, like, mm. these, like, ko koala-shaped uh, 
things that look exactly like this that you like fit onto the end of like pens or like they can clip right. onto like, bags and stuff and it looks exactly like these except it looks like a koala yeah yeah I, I remember that was a big trend there for a second shit to put on your pencil and pen mm-hmm, yeah on the end of it yeah I, I just cannot believe that this is like a hot christmas toy that kids are like yo what i really want is a fingerling apparently and apparently they they're like interactive okay just just something just... like reading this it says like they come with like color and personality and programmed with different reactions <laughs> What, 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 what kind of reaction could it have? <laughs> oh, God, why am I on your finger? Oh, God, I want to die. <laughs> I, I imagine all of them are like the butter robot from Rick and Morty. Why was I made to feel pain? <laughs> By God. <laughs> and hey, speaking of robot toys after that, we have the dog E, which again, I feel like this is just repackaging some shit from our generation. It I is. feel like we had... We had, like, the awesome We were the first generation where they tried to sell robot pets to us. Yeah, we had that. We had that, like, that, the, that like, robot monkey, like, mm-hmm. big white thing that, like, danced. And th- there was a dog one which came with, like, a bone. And you, like... Yeah, I remember that, yeah, yes. And you can, like, tap its head and its ears would move and stuff like that. Yeah. This is just, like, a, I... the upgraded version of that. Yes, apparently this is more advanced. It makes 200 sounds. Uh, has a wagging tail, a cute little run, and an accompanying app because everything needs to have an app now. An app you'll have to sign up for and they will sell, sell your information to marketing people. Yeah, I was going to say, now, how does this dog, you know, help empower the Chinese <laughs> government is my question. <laughs> is it is it spying on me like my TikTok page is? <laughs> will, will this dog also be greatly disappointed like the Chinese government who watches my TikToks? Oh, God, he's talking about Harley Quinn again. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, no, no. Man, that's my favorite thing. If TikTok is a tool of the Chinese government, then it's probably just going to demoralize all of them. Where it's like, (laughs) oh, another new dance trend from the Americans. Huh, how about that? (laughs) Wow, this guy's uh, making another curry on a Saturday night. How about that? (laughs) Irish Chinese food is different than our Chinese food. Really different. (laughs) Curry sauce? What? What? (laughs) But yeah, it, it looks kind of cute. If I was a child, I might be interested in it. But again, I feel like I feel like we've seen too many of these, Matt. We've seen too many doggies mm. come and go. Yeah, yeah. And it will keep coming and going. Indeed it will. But that's not the only interactive pet we have here. We also have the Bitsy interactive pet. I guess this is like an upgraded version of a Tamagotchi. It's a screen-free interactive pet, which, again, sounds like a lot of friggin' parents. being like, you spend too much time on a screen. Here, look at this cat that's technically real but also digital. (laughs) It looks like a hologram. It kind of does, doesn't it? Like it uses like a mirror or something. It also apparently Pokemon evolves. Each one begins as a baby and grows through three evolutionary stages. But does it also learn sick-ass attacks? Yeah, yeah. can we fight them? Can we, like, connect them up like infrared? Yeah, I mean, if it's not, then you're definitely missing something, right? (laughs) Hell, can I get the doggy to fight the Blitzy and, you know, see who wins? Yeah, can we have interactive dog fights? Yeah, we can take, uh bets on it i mean obviously we're children so we can't use real money we'll uh, we'll bet v bucks we'll bet Fortnite v bucks <laughs> on it <laughs> could you imagine yeah robux yeah robux now this one is the weirdest but also something i would be interested in the star wars lola animatronic droid kenobi came out how long ago and they're only making this now i don't think they're making this i've seen this in stores i've seen like, it in like stores a- too a- ages ago Okay, so this is just an update on an old thing. It's funny that this is a hot toy now in 2023 when the show hasn't been out for so long. Maybe this just had, like, a great marketing campaign that I totally missed. Yeah, and I guess, like, I mean, it's Star Wars. Which is always hot. And, don't and like, Lola's great. Lola definitely wins the award for probably the cutest droid. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's small, too. I'm sure that helps, too. It's small, unlike, you know, an R2-D2 or even a BB-8 that would be much bigger. Yep. It's got a stand that, uh, what is it, mimics hovering. It's got a companion mode. You can attach legs to it in defiance of God. (laughs) It's got an on-the-go mode, which means it zooms through, so I guess it actually has some movement, too. No, I think it, like, 
its wings open up and you can like play that it's oh. like moving sort of thing yeah of course can i can i put one of those sith inquisitor trackers on and that makes it like go all red and evil for a minute <laughs> that'd be pretty cool i'd like that <laughs> We, uh, we, we need more Sith droids is what we need. There's very few of those. Where's my HK uh, figure? Yeah, yeah, interactive HK. We'll call you a meat bag. Yeah, threaten to kill all humans. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dark Droid came out this year. It would be a perfect time to have an evil droid toy. Exactly, yeah. In fact, you know, you can get your Lola toy. It crosses over with Dark Droid. One day it just goes nuts and starts attacking you as part of the bigger Star Wars meta narrative that's going on. Yeah, it tries to kill you, you but you wouldn't know unless you read the tie-ins. Exactly. You got to know. That's that's the thing. We got to teach kids now to read the tie-ins or they won't know. <laughs> I mean, come on, if they can give away a big plot point to Star Wars in Fortnite, I think we can do some dark droid integration with the Lola figure, is all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, now, from there, we actually have something that I'm sure would have spe sp spoken to you and I as children. We have the Marvel Spidey and his amazing friend's web spinner playset. Obviously, I haven't watched a minute of that Spider-Man and his amazing friends because it's, you know, made for toddlers. But hey, this looks cool yeah it's a it's a it's a kid's toy it's, it's what more yeah. could you want yeah spider-man as a kid's toy which the, the thing that i really love about this is that this uh it imagines a world where spider-man is such an egomaniac that his base just has a giant version of his own head on top <laughs> yeah. that's the thing with these toys i i they, they do it with like the batman toys as well when they have like mm -hmm. the bat cave it's just like a giant batman head or something which which for batman it at least makes sense because a he's rich and a and b we know he's an egomaniac spider-man's a guy who never has any money so the idea that he would spend what money he has on this giant silly base well, that's the thing he had the money to do it so he thought why not i'm only gonna have one chance to do this you gotta go with it oh now i'm all out of my jewels <laughs> that's a that's a freddy god finger joke for people who don't know <laughs> Also, I like you look down there, we see a Spider-Mobile too, which the idea of Spider-Man driving a car is never not hilarious to it's, me. It's always very funny, yeah. Because he lives in New York, where you can never drive anywhere very quickly, <laughs> <laughs> and it's webs, and the fact that Spider-Man did have a car in the comics, and he, like, crashed it the first time he had it, so he just webbed it up and brought it back to the company. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah the chat saying how did kindergarten peter parker afford this is is that the gimmick of spider-man and his amazing friends are they actually toddlers i assume that was just the art style but are they really toddlers i assume they're probably like young kids you know you gotta have the kids see themselves in the hero sort of thing right i guess they're doing like a paw patrol pj mass type thing with it right yeah cowboy in the chat it's spider-man he used his spider senses to uber <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wasn't that a joke from the books? He was briefly like an Uber driver, but he just swung people places. I think so, yes. To make a little money? Okay, whoever did that, that was genuinely funny. <laughs> That's a good bit. I like that bit. All right, now moving on from there, we have the Little Live Pets Mama Surprise, which, again, just feels like another gift for kids who really want pets, but their parents are like, no. Won't let them. The, I, I guess it's to, like... I guess toys like these are to, like, have the kids gain some sort of like experience with an animal and responsibility yeah yeah does does one of yeah. the hamsters like like eat the other yeah yeah the, do you like come back one day and like one of the hamsters is like just missing and it's like uh oh <laughs> the mother ate the hamster what do you do yeah it happens <laughs> yeah so it even says here not ready for an actual pet little live pets is here for you the mama surprise guinea pig set includes a soft interactive mama which i mean who doesn't want a soft interactive mama <laughs> and three babies that appear in the hutch note an adult is needed to set up the hutch so kids can experience the birth oh yeah that's that's great kids love birth <laughs> surprise elements mama has over 20 sounds and reactions and the set includes accessories for your new pets <laughs> Yeah, again, this, this, I guess there really is just a big, like, you know, cottage industry for, I guess, you know, kids who live in apartments in big cities who can't have pets. Yeah. Yeah, just what a kid wants for Christmas, responsibility. <laughs> That's what I'm giving you the gift of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, 
Now, after that, we have a gift that will seem familiar to anyone who watched the show last year because it's the Bluey Ultimate Lights and Sounds Playhouse. We just had the regular Lights and Sounds Playhouse last year, Matt, but apparently there's an even better premium edition they came out with this year because you got to clean up twice. Of course, of course it's the Ultimate Edition. Yeah, I'm sure it has things that weren't in the yellow one i'm sure about it yeah it's not just a yeah, repackaging <laughs> of course of course it's it's like the playstation slim or the playstation plus they come out with a couple months after the first one comes mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. I, I do genuinely love bluey mania has taken over the world this fun little australian expat is like the hottest thing with toddlers now yeah it's cool toddlers and adults too i think the show really took off because it was able to capture parents and be like hey you know what we know it's rough here's something funny for you yeah yeah here's a show that's not totally insipid also they had a game this year didn't they they had a freaking video game yeah and apparently it was like awful yeah, I mean, for toddlers, what do you expect? What I like, what I heard about the game, is apparently the art style is so reminiscent of the show, people who uploaded gameplay footage of it actually got copyright claimed because people <laughs> thought they were just uploading the show. <laughs> Which, honestly, I think is probably one of the greatest compliments you can have for your art design. <laughs> All I'm saying, I think you did a good job. <laughs> but yeah, so there's the Bluey House, everyone. I imagine if I was six years old, I'd probably be super into that. Yeah, absolutely. So here we have the Tiny Land Kids Fort Art Building Kit. Okay, so it's a model kit for kids. All right, 130 pieces. Yeah, it all locks together. It's one of those interlocking systems. I remember this. We had something like this when I was a kid. Yeah, you throw a blanket over it, and they've got the fort, and then it collapses in on them, and you've got to dig your children yeah. out of it. and. <laughs> With one of them weighted blankets. Oh, man, I swear, we, we have more Tiny Land Kids fatalities every year. Yeah, like, like that uh, that guinea pig set teaches them responsibility. This teaches them about, like, proper, like, engineering structural yeah, like, yeah. buildings and everything. D damn it, Billy, this isn't up to code. This isn't yeah. OSHA certified. What did you expect was happening? Yeah, and then you ground them because it's not OSHA certified. They, they forgot now, the, 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 the bracing pylons or something. Yeah. Now, Billy, did you use actual union labor on this one, or did you cut costs? Uh, no, maybe. Yeah, did you, did you use, like, like building-grade materials or those cheap Chinese ones you see on the internet that just crumble at the, the slightest touch? Man, there's a subdivision over by where I live. It's like the biggest thing in my town. First off, they built it on shitty land. They built it on land that floods every time it rains. They were supposed to build a Walmart there. They didn't. Now they're building houses. The first big storm of the year, a bunch of the houses crumbled, like legitimately. <laughs> And you could tell they were freaked out. They're like, oh, God, oh, God, we were supposed to have people moving into these, like, soon. So what they did is they put up a sign on the outside, no entry, which basically just means don't come in and take pictures on this and embarrass us, even though everyone can see it because it's in the middle of an empty field. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, don't, don't look behind the curtain. There's nothing behind the curtain. It's fine. Ooh literally and yep they were using you know non-union labor and like non-certified parts and everything and i'm like wow i'm really <laughs> glad i'm not going to be living there i can only assume another tragedy will be coming out of this soon and people will be like how could we have known we did know we tried to tell you <laughs> uh now after that we have the bumpas weighted plush dolls okay i mean a plush i understand why they gotta be weighted so you can like you put a bunch of these on your child while they sleep mm. so they can't get up so like they're not wandering around the house or bothering you they, oh yeah like, you know yeah. what Matt, each think, of these is like know. 50 pounds each and you just like chuck a bunch of them on a kid and you're fine i've never understood this weighted blanket trend i know that's become a huge thing now with like everyone selling weighted blankets is it like a sensory thing that i just don't understand yeah no i i don't get it either i i don't think i could sleep with something like waiting me down no no especially me as i've stated before i have sleep paralysis so that would freak <laughs> me the fuck out would make it worse yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely now here's a funny thing too these I, I these things looked really fucking familiar to me and i'm like where the hell have i seen these before it's not these things i was thinking of you know what i was thinking of matt have you seen uh i, I think it's just like a nice lady on etsy who sells like the pride flag bat so you can get like the rainbow bat and like the mm. buy and pan flag as bats that's what 
these look like these look like ripoffs of that nice lady's design i mean we've seen that happen before where these big companies will take like some like mm. design from like like etsy or something like that mm. and just be like this is ours now yes this is totally what this looks like because again i i think that lady sells out and she's just one lady who makes them at home mm -hmm. and everything and yeah i could totally see a company stealing her idea which if that's true that's kind of fun yeah yeah <laughs> Because even the name sounds like they came up with it at the last second. Um, um, bumpers. Yeah. yeah. What does that even mean in relation to, like, a weighted toy? Yeah, because they're not, like, they're bats. They're clearly supposed to be bats, right? Yeah. Unless I'm stupid, I don't know. Also, uh, what is it? They look like they're already asleep, so they look like they're already dead. Yes. But they're really happy about it, though. <laughs> they, too, want to shirk off this mortal coil. Now, moving on there, I think we have something we can all agree on. Natural Geographics Mega Slime Kitten Putty Lab. Oh, yeah, now now we're back to the good nostalgia. I feel like there was a whole era where kids missed out on this, where it's like, yeah, make slime, gross out your sister. Yeah, right. Like, you never really see slime toys anymore. No, we like 90s kids, we were a huge market for that. That mm. there was a whole cottage industry of toys where it's like, yeah, make slime, creepy crawlers, it's gross as fuck. Yeah, no one's going to like this. Yeah. I do like these because I've seen these kits before in like toy stores here. Because like, I don't know about your guys' toy store, but we have one where it's aisles full of this natural National Geographic stuff. Like, like dig out, oh, a, really? di dig out a dinosaur from like this block of oh, like yes. clay, and you know, I've seen that. Make yeah. slime, and you know, here's a microscope, and you know, all that sort of stuff. And I'm like, no kid is actually going to do this and learn something. They just want to make that slime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, again, I love National Geographic is getting in here and being like, hey, it's kind of like chemistry. It's, you know, vaguely educational. Yeah. And isn't it? All kids will see blue slime, green slime. It's stick. <laughs> yeah, it's stick. Yeah, it's vaguely educational. We're National Geographic. We used to make, like, textbooks and documentaries and everything. What the hell happened to us? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, it, maybe there's, like, a documentary about this slime, and because it's National Geographic, maybe they relate mm -hmm. it to, like, hitler or something yeah probably like hitler's and... sec secret slime factory or something i don't know oh oh matt i i think you just you know managed to cheat the algorithm there i think that's a billion views right there hitler's secret that's, slime lab that's national geographic's new eight-part doco series yeah yep narrated by david attenborough yeah yeah so yeah someone like that paul burn uh, john bernthal or something i don't know paul walker yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll do it don't you love when you're watching one of those national geographic specials and you're like oh it's you know narrated by someone who actually has some esteem and then sometimes it's like narrated by tim allen wait what <laughs> yeah benedict cumberbatch and then tim allen yeah how the fuck did that happen my favorite one is like when they're clearly asleep at the wheel and or they don't know what they're talking about and they're like why did i agree to sign up to this <laughs> Like, like when they like have a really difficult word they have to say, so they say it phonetically. You can tell that this is like their hundredth take, and there's some poor guy in the sound booth just hitting his fucking yeah. head. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it in post. We'll get it in post. <laughs> now, after that, we have the play phone natural shape and learn letters and numbers. Okay, so this looks like something for really little kids, if yeah. you're still learning numbers. Yep. Yeah. And also, I'm certain they won't just make shapes and numbers. I'm sure they're going to make, you know, magnum dongs and shit they're not <laughs> supposed to. I'm, I'm assuming your kid is a little bastard like I'm a little bastard. <laughs> you know, I made, you know, uh, a poop is what I made. I just made a big turd <laughs> out of this. How's that sound? <laughs> Are you learning your numbers? Yeah, I'm learning yeah. number two. <laughs> yeah, kids aren't going to make numbers from that. They're just going to eat it. <laughs> Yeah, really. And again, the big problem, as we have stated before, if they don't want kids to eat it, why did they make it look delicious? Exactly. They need to make it much less delicious. That's the problem. That's the, that's what I found really strange about toys, like Play-Doh. And how yeah, they yeah. have, like, Play-Doh sets where it's like, make a pizza or, like, cook a cake. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you, you're telling kids not to eat this stuff. You make it non-toxic because you know they're going to eat it. But, like, yeah. you tell them not to. But then you go and make a play set that's like, yeah build a, a, a four-story cake and decorate yeah. it and ice, then cut a piece off ice cream factory yeah yeah again th that's where the real money is matt we need to make edible play-doh for children is what we need to make surely that's that been actually done. surely that's right. been done 
like edible play-doh that tastes good is the thing like if it tastes good and tastes like the thing you're trying to make you could just do like replace play-doh with like cookie dough you basically at that point at that point you're just making cookie dough creations no we can't do that because then we're getting the kids fat that's the problem damn it (laughs) Then, then, then we're, we're just we'll a put candy a heap company. of like preservatives and like malitol and stuff in there, so it's, it, yeah, it's fine. yeah, 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 yeah. That's the thing. We make it out of sugar-free gummy bears, is what we do. <laughs> it's just pure malbitol. Hey, your kid haven't had a good BM in a bit. Don't worry. We got Matt and Joel's comic multiverse uh, play clay. It's not play doh. It's legally different. <laughs> Fun clay substitute. Yes, you can eat it. We've been eating it this whole time while we talk. <laughs> We call it Play-Doh, but spell it dough like how dough is actually said, not Mm. (laughs) D-O-H. Yeah, exactly. We believe in literacy over here and spelling (laughs) things the right way. (laughs) No, you know what we do? We just make the stuff from the movie The Stuff. (laughs) It's just this weird, frothy yogurt-like stuff. Hey, kids, it's The Stuff. Yeah, here's some of the the, the the chemical from Night of the Living Dead, yeah. <laughs> mm. Ooh, ooh, or the stuff from the first Power Rangers movie, which I actually think someone did make that on Etsy, <laughs> where it's, yeah, yeah, Ivan's oohs, and if your parents don't like it, throw it in their faces. Let's get sticky, kids. <laughs> Again, see, that was completely fine at that point in time telling kids, let's get sticky. <laughs> And speaking of something that's definitely sticky, the next gift there is the Beast Lab Shark Beast Creator. Now, I've been to Walmart a couple times shopping, and I've seen these all over the place. So these are definitely popular. And again, if I was young enough, this probably would be something cool, because basically you get to make your own toy is what it seems like. For a moment there, like, TikTok was, like, flooded with videos of people who would buy these, open them, and, like, like, do them. And really yeah they're, they're like the weirdest fucking toy ever because you like open them and it has like something you gotta like pour water on and then like dig through with like a little shovel and you'll get like like a gem and then you put it in like the container and it's like oh that's the thing's heart and it is really weird it's really fucking weird things yeah, maybe it's just because it's harder to keep kids' attention these days, so you got to put a lot of extra steps and a lot of twists and turns. I feel like in our day, we were a lot easier going like, yeah, man, creepy crawlers. You just put the goo in the oven that's clearly not just an easy-bake oven that they've refitted for boys. Yep. <laughs> But yeah, this actually looks kind of cool and kind of interesting. And if I was a little kid, I imagine I would be super into this because I fucking love monsters and I love mad science. And I like that this looks a little dangerous. It's got the caution tape and everything is green (laughs) and extreme. Yep, yep. Yeah, that bright green. Oh, yeah. Now, after that, we go to something that's completely not extreme at all. And that is the Sesame Street Elmo Slide Plush. I guess you don't tickle him anymore. He just slides to the left, slides to the right. He does the gritty, yeah. <laughs> yeah, does does the gritty, does the duggy. He does all the moves. <laughs> Man, I, it, it's so amazing. We talk about things that are endearing. But again, they created Elmo for our generation. And Elmo has maintained like 30 years. Mm-hmm. You know, and they only had to get rid of one of the voice actors. Yeah. Again, there's a there's a great documentary about Kevin Clash, the guy who was the original Elmo and came up with the character and everything. And it's like, wow, what a happy, feel-good story. I feel like there's something uh, this guy isn't telling us. And then all the allegations and everything came out. And I'm like, that's what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> that's why he liked tickling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, 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 allegedly allegedly the people he was corresponding with were technically legal age but still you can see why they had an amicable split with him <laughs> but yeah what, what what can you really say about elmo that you haven't said already i know it's a, it's that classic toy mm-hmm. forever forever endearing you know mm-hmm. elmo brings brings generations together yeah now after that we got a real winner teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem pizza fire delivery van fuck yeah now this is a toy (laughs) this is a toy ass toy right here i am so happy that that mutant mayhem movie did so good was so good and because of that we are seeing such a resurgence of turtle mania and ninja turtle toys all over the place see i always saw ninja turtle toys in the stores they never went away yeah 
But to see this one particularly from the movie and to see so much joy behind it and to be like, yes, this is meant for kids. This is made for the new generation of fans. And like I said, this this is a toy-ass toy. This is the get in the battle van and shoot the fucking pizzas at the blocks that are in every commercial for some reason. They have those blocks the in the blocks. background that fall down, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the nondescript, non-religious, non, you know, yeah. gendered blocks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that they were usually shiny or made out of some, like, you know, sparkling material. I'm like, where can I get those blocks? I want some of them blocks is what I want. Forget the toy, just give me some blocks. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, yeah, so this is super cool. This is this is the sort of thing that even now is like a 30-something. This reminds me of things I grew up with. So I'm like, yeah, turtles in the turtle van doing turtle things. Yeah, this is another toy like the Barbie toy that I expect, like, scalpers would just buy up. Oh, no doubt. No doubt about it. Well, it's funny. Again, like I said, I've been to a lot of Walmarts recently looking for gifts. Uh, most of the Leos and most of the Rafts are sold. They got lots of Donnies and lots of Mikeys. And I'm like, yeah, well, things don't change, I guess. The more yep. they change, the more they stay the same. Yep. Everyone loves the leader. Everyone loves the angry one. You know, the, the nerd and the stoner. Meh. Yeah, meh. Which is funny, because, you know, it, it, in fantasy, we all want to be Leo and Raph, but in real life, we all know we're a lot of Donnies and Mikeys is what we are. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, or, or Casey. <laughs> or Casey, even, too, yeah. Or, or April. April helps, you know. <laughs> she really helps in the new movie. She also throws up a lot, which, again, relatable. Mad relatable. <laughs> Uh, after that, we have the Thames and Cosmos candy vending machine STEM experiment kit. That's a lot of fucking words. <laughs> that is a lot of words. That is a word salad. Did a machine write this? <laughs> I like that it says it, it's a STEM project in disguise. Like, once the kids learn that, they're like, oh, don't play with it anymore. Yeah, well, you see, kids, to make the candy vending machine work so you can eat the sweet, sweet candy, you need to know some science, math, and engineering is what yeah. you need. This isn't small either. This is two foot tall. Holy shit. So I see that's and it's decent size. Yeah, and it's 30 bucks American, so, you know, it's not a particularly cheap toy, too. But, you know, I bet you know where they get you? You got to refill the candy. Of course, of course. You gotta refill the goddamn candy. That's that's the trick. Cause your kid will have it. They'll play with it a little bit. They'll eat all the candy. Then they'll never touch it again. Cause they'll have no reason to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chem dog in the chat saying, "Oh no, it actually uses stem cells. Oh, that's a different kind of stem." <laughs> hey kids, get some of this. You'll be big and strong. <laughs> this will cure what ails you. We promise. <laughs> Oh, man, can I get some of that for my dad? He's got a fucked up neck from years of construction and irregular movements. Yeah, just to, just to, just sprinkle them, them, them uh, stem cells on. Yeah, that's all it takes. Now, after that, we have the Magnetiles 32-piece set. Again, another Lego that's not quite Lego. I, and I'm fairly certain these toys have been around forever because I vaguely remember having some of these at, at some point. Same, same here. Also, my selective dyslexia definitely kicked in there. It's the Magna Tiles. For some reason, I thought it said Maga Tiles at first. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm sure there's probably, like, some kit you can buy off, you know, Trump.com or something that's like that. Oh, I'm sure it is. Hey, kids, build the wall. Hey, kids, can you lock her up? You can lock her up. Can you can, can you burn all the evidence? Can you <laughs> what, can, yeah. can you do away with all the transfers yeah. to make sure no one sees? Yeah, can you lie on the stand? Trapdoor action to hide the ballots. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you, you pull his string there and he just grabs him. <laughs> He's got grab and action. Grab and yeah, done. It's that kung fu grip, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the brand new Grab and Donnie press the button and he says all of his great cash phrases. Huge, huge. <laughs> yeah, lasers, space lasers. Someone should really go out there and sweep the forest floor. Just, you know, just get a, just get enough light in there and enough bleach in the disinfectant and, and that'll do good. <laughs> That's just fine. <laughs> Uh, moving on from there to the Lego Friends Olivia Space Academy. Oh, I'm sorry, Olivia. We don't send people to space anymore unless you have a weirdo billionaire funding your space program. Yeah, yeah. What a what a disappointing toy for children. Yeah, get get them all excited in space and all the places they'll never go because billionaires have already decided that they own space. <laughs> 
Well, shit, that's a sad one. <laughs> let's let's move on to another happier one. <laughs> It'd be even worse if, like, the, the, the shuttle was called, like, I don't know, the Challenger or something. Oh, no. Hey, kids, <laughs> learn about the Challenger. <laughs> it's a sad story. Bring some tissue. <laughs> Okay, now these I kind of know. The Calico Critters pony stylish hair salon. You're thinking, Joel, why the fuck do you know about that? <laughs> Again, because of TikTok. You collect them, yeah. <laughs> well, no. You, you see, on TikTok, there's this lady who does, like, weirdo, like, friggin' short films. Like, avant-garde-ass short films with these things as her actors. And it's kind of like reimagining, like, trashy reality TV shows and shit. <laughs> So like, oh no, they're pregnant. Oh no, my husband left me. Oh no, I'm dying on the inside. <laughs> but it's with these cute critters and all of the backdrops. It's 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 weird as fuck. It's like some really avant-garde shit. But that's where I've actually seen these before. <laughs> so if you're wondering about my TikTok preferences and you know what's rotting my brain in all the right ways, this is what's rotting my brain. <laughs> I haven't actually seen them in a bit because uh, again, if you follow me online, uh. Uh, Amazon freaking nuked my TikTok and I had to start all over again, so Aww. I haven't seen one of these in a bit. Aww. Yeah, I know. It's really sad. It's funny, too. I'm getting way more porn bots this second time around because I was so busy trying to get all, like, you know, my nerd stuff, my comic stuff, my video game stuff, you know, the food and recipe stuff I like, where TikTok's like, well, you're not getting enough smut in your diet. Again, we're just going to throw as much as you as we can. Come on, we'll have to figure out your fetish eventually. They, 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 they're basically just saying, it's like, look, you need to get some, you need to get some, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you're liking all of these things that aren't going to get you any. <laughs> absolutely that's that's basically and i'm like you know what tiktok your algorithm hasn't steered me wrong before so uh, yeah, this man has no bitches let's send him some yeah, bitches <laughs> yeah is what tiktok was saying i'm like well you know what you were right about those recipes and you were right about uh what is it these uh video game hints and tricks so sure you know what <laughs> i'll fo i'll follow some of these you know what? i'll share the love <laughs> Now for that, we have something that actually does seem like a STEM toy, Snap Circuits Jr., which looks to be actually teaching you rudimentary electronics. Yeah, this, this is something, like, I would buy for myself. Yeah, it seems kind of cool, actually. It takes two AA batteries. It looks like, you know, how you can basically build, like, a motherboard, essentially. Yeah, yeah. I think a little motor and everything, yeah. Yeah, you can apparently build a flashlight, a photo sensor, a siren to piss off your parents and everyone around you. <laughs> and more. And more. And more. You gotta love that. It's like, look, we technically didn't lie to you. We said you could build more, but that's on you. That's not yeah. on us. You gotta buy the expansion kits. <laughs> you know they fucking have those. <laughs> you know that's a thing. And if you get you know, enough being, of them, you can, like, I don't know build like a nuclear reactor or something <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. being being a friggin toy maker is really just like being a drug dealer the first taste is well not free but mostly free and then we got to keep selling you the add-ons every year yeah yeah uh, after that we have another evergreen one jurassic world dominion super colossal gigantosaurus yep dinosaurs never go out of fashion they don't. We had dinosaurs last year when we did this, and I'm like, why is this even on here? There hasn't been a new Jurassic Park movie in forever. And like you said, doesn't matter. Dinosaurs, always dope. There's always going to be kids who are dinosaur kids. Absolutely. Horse girls and dinosaur kids, man. It's just that they, they, they just always are making those kids. And truly, I think if you were a dinosaur kid growing up, there's probably a good indication that you're going to be a cool person when you grow up because you're going to get really in to Doctor Who or Battlestar Galactica or Babylon 5 because dinosaurs is really the first world in nerddom for kids. You learn everything about it. You're super obsessed about it. And then that takes you to the next thing. Yeah, well, it's, it's that meme where there's, there's the dark path and the good path and the good path is mm. like all that and the bad path is like, I don't know, furries or something. Yeah, exactly. The good path. Hey, now, hey, now, Matt, I'm pretty sure we have some furry fans out there who, uh, who, who have lots of money to buy suits and, you know, are good patrons. The, the suspiciously wealthy furries. <laughs> Where did they get their money? I don't know. Maybe I don't want to know. But they do, and they vote in surprising numbers. Uh, but yeah, dinosaurs, always fucking cool. 
And after that, we got a leapfrog thing, which again is like the standard bear for educational toys. The leapfrog magic adventure microscope. Hey, kids, now you can finally reenact your favorite true crime murder podcast. <laughs> Who, d who did it? Can you find out? Can you get Jimmy off death row? He's been there for 30 years. <laughs> Finally, you can solve the mystery. <laughs> I don't I don't have much else to say on that. That's that's yeah. my one joke. Yeah, it comes with slides. That's that's pretty cool. I don't think it's yeah. like not an actual microscope. It'll just show you like a picture. But yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. You can mess with kids, put some shit in there. Like, you know, just a middle finger in one of those. <laughs> Or, or like just little messages from your parents clean your room you're adopted <laughs> where, where are those messages uh then we got the elo surprise or lol surprise fashion show mega runway like lol is like a brand unto itself because i've seen its logo on other stuff really i've never seen it i think it is i think they did like blind boxes for a little bit because i would mm. always see it next to like the blind box These toys look like, for, like blind box toys shit. They're like yeah, little, I little think... chibi toy looking things. Yeah, okay, so yeah, was, you enjoy opening tiny packaging yep. to reveal the 12 exclusive dolls. So yes, this is some upgraded blind bag shit that's, hey, if you already have the little toys, well, now you need the runway set to go with them. Of course, yeah. Which is genius <clears throat> marketing and also incredibly insidious at the same time. Yep. And hey, speaking of ingenious and insidious, the Lego Super Mario Brothers Adventure Starter Course set. <laughs> I, I I keep seeing these these Lego Mario sets. Sam. And, and like, I can never justify buying any of them just because of like how small they are and how much they yeah. want to charge for. How much is this like? Almost $50 for this. Oh yeah, they're super expensive because you're paying for the Lego brand name and yep. you're paying for the Mario brand name. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, this isn't even the best looking Mario thing that I've seen recently because again, I've been to a lot of the toy stores because of Christmas. They have Bowser's Full Castle with yeah. like four figures from the new movie. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well shit, if I was spending money, if I was like a kid, I would totally get that one. Exactly. Now, I mentioned about insidiousness. Apparently, these Lego pieces talk, and apparently, if you got the Mario one of the original set, Mario would say things, and they actually firmware updated him to say, I miss my brother, Luigi, because they had just released the Luigi toy. <laughs> yeah, ain't that fucked up? Isn't that dark and dystopian as shit? Connect your Mario Lego toy to the USB port. <laughs> to, uh, basically. To, to firmware update him. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, look at that. I'm uh, I'm looking at all your banking information. Yeah. Eventually, he'll just start like spouting things like, "Buy Super Mario Wonder on the Nintendo Switch this right. Friday and receive I don't know, Tears of the Kingdom yeah. for free or something. I don't know. Yeah. It would make me happy if you bought my new game. You don't want me Mario to be sad, do you? Do you? I feel we are growing apart. <laughs> I would like to see other people. <laughs> That's what I want, just passive-aggressive, shitty Lego Mario. <laughs> I feel like we do not really communicate anymore. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's fucking wild. After that, we have the Hot Wheels ID Smart Track, which again, I feel like they have sold some variation of this forever Hot Wheels. Uh, yeah, Hot Wheels, again, something that never goes out of fashion. Which is what, yeah, it never goes out of style. There's always going to be car kids, like there's always going to be uh, friggin' dinosaur kids. This might be the most expensive thing we've looked at yet. This is $144 American, so this That's is almost fucked. like 200 bucks our money. Yeah, well, again, it's like Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels is always really expensive. I yeah. don't really know why. Yeah, I don't know why either. I guess that's maybe why I grew up with a bunch of, like, Matchbox and yeah. Jada and I, all, like, the I, Pepsi to their Coke. I, I do think that kits like this are expensive, maybe because, like, maybe it has something to do, because I know sometimes they come with cars. So maybe right. it's so, like, a things like, you can only get this car in this kit, and they're relying on, like, collectors. Probably. Like, sh shelling out for it to just get that one car. That's true. There's a lot of collectability in it. Just, I just think it's crazy where it's like they've been selling the same track forever, just slightly updating it every time. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be a great business to be in the fucking Hot Wheels business. Uh, we got another Hot Wheels after that, the Hot Wheels Rift Rally. Yeah. Which, I don't know, is, it, is, is this a remote control thing? Yeah, it's got a camera on it. 
and you're like you oh can set the track up and you can like zoom around it yeah oh it's also they, compatible with ios and ps4 and 5 controllers yeah they huh. did something similar with like mario kart mm, we have like, yes, like remote controlled like mario and bowser on like cars and you can like drive them around and there's like a virtual track quote unquote right <laughs> as robot of the sea so eloquently puts it hot wheels cars a dollar 99 hot wheels tracks 300 dollars <laughs> no joke no joke like the places near me are selling like hot wheels cars for like 50 cents a pop but then you go and like oh, i want to buy a track oh that'll be 90 dollars I, uh, I was never a car guy but this year i saw those J jada hollywood and drives where it's you get a car related to a famous movie and a little figure to go with oh, it so yeah, you I've get them so you get like a little die cast freddy krueger and you get the car that's like in every friggin nightmare on elm street movie mm-hmm mm -hmm. And they got one, like, you know, for every Batmobile and, you yep. know, everything like that. And I'm like, okay, those are actually pretty cool. Yeah, those are pretty cool. Th those are, and, are more like a collector item, though. Very. And they got the Ecto-1 and they got the Zebra 3 and the A-Team van. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So all the famous ones from movies that you would know. All the different Mad Max cars. Mm -hmm. Which would be a great time for it. Uh, all right. Uh, our, our second to last one here is the My Real Jam electric guitar, which again just screams annoy your parents with your plonks and wailings because you are a small child who does not know how to play the guitar. Yep, and apparently you can sync it up to a Bluetooth device and play oh, geez, like that's... any song. So yeah, that's uh, yeah. Yeah. You, do parents still do that trick that they did on our generation oh sorry you're out of batteries oh sorry the batteries don't work again oh geez it does say here that parents do control the volume so i'm guessing there is like an app yeah i guess i guess they couldn't do the battery trick anymore because everything is usb based now yeah it has like an inbuilt it has like lithium battery or something in it yeah oh sorry you lost your charger oh sorry oh no we don't have any batteries that fit oh well mm. Uh, no, no usb cords that fit ah oh, that's a shame no no noise i guess <laughs> uh, now look if i get this guitar for my child can i also get them you know everything else they need for you know the white college guy with an acoustic guitar starter pack <laughs> can it come with a fedora and an ironic band shirt and everything else so he can just play that on the quad and seem to be really interesting <laughs> Cause, cause you know, I know my child and that's what my child will be an annoying guy with an acoustic guitar. <laughs> you know, some people want more for their children. Some people are realistic. <laughs> and, uh, the last thing on the hottest Christmas toys is just the Nintendo switch, uh, OLED screen version. Yeah. Which really surprises me because like, I, I, I know like, like in terms of like sales numbers, like switch doesn't really do very well like it, it's not it's below playstation 5 and the xbox interesting so for it to be on the top list is, is quite strange yeah though then again this is also toys is the thing where i mm. imagine mm. the playstation 5 and xbox are probably sold in like consumer electronics where nintendo doesn't really hide from the fact where they're like no we're, we're toys for children we're not the arms of bigger tech giants that are Sony and Microsoft. We are Nintendo. We started making toys. We continue to make toys. That's true. That's very true. So I imagine that's why it's counted. Also here, the OLED screen, it's a little smaller, you know, not as shiny. So I imagine that would do it. I, I, I'm i playing my Switch. I'm playing the new Pokemon DLC right now. Yeah, I sold my Switch just because I wasn't getting any use out of it. And I know they're going to be releasing like a new one within the next year or so. So I'm, I'm more than happy to wait. Again, I, I got it because I assumed I would be going on more trips, and then I didn't go on any trips. Then <laughs> COVID hit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm still enjoying it, don't get me wrong. I play the Pokemon on it, I'll probably play the Mega Man on it on some point. I know those aren't, like, new things a lot of the time, where it's like, hey, those are just re-releases of old shit. But I'm like, eh, you know, it's, it's fine. Some things I think are better to be played in the handheld. Yeah, I, I played, like, everything I wanted to play on it, and then, like, well, I don't need it anymore. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm still enjoying mine. I'm still having some fun. That that new Pokemon DLC is hard as fuck, by the way, too. They assumed where it's no, like, yeah. look, if you got this second DLC, you must be a hardcore player. So guess what? Everything is double battles now. And everyone, you know, the, the kid gloves are off, basically. No, yeah. 
Because, <laughs> like, so many of those other games you can just sleepwalk through, not this one. This one's like, nope, sorry, little Billy. You're going to get <laughs> smacked around even if you're level 100. We don't give a fuck. The AI, the AI is actually out for blood this time. How about that? Uh, now, uh, you had some black market shit. That's all the official toys you can get. But l let's assume that maybe you don't have the money or maybe you're buying for someone you don't give a shit about. Matt, uh, Matt has something different for us. Matt has some alternate gift ideas. <laughs> some bootlegs if you want to save a couple of bucks, you know? <laughs> if you want to save a couple of bucks. And I mean, hey, we live in an era of inflation and hyperinflation and price fixing and everything else. So you're going to need to get a deal where you can get it. And Matt, Matt's here with the deals to make this, you know, not just a Merry Christmas, but a thrifty Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what do you got, Matt? Let's uh, um, let's give this a look. Right, so the first one I've got is, I'm just going to show it and, and uh, let you guys judge on, on All like, right. what you think it is. All right, now I'm on the same time as everyone else, everyone I'm watching on the screen, so I will only see it when we see it. Okay. <laughs> so I think that's supposed to be Knuckles. Why does he have thumbs for hands, and is that a pump for air? <laughs> I... I don't know exactly what it is. I'm pretty sure it's like a like you, you, you like pump him up. I think. Oh God! And I so think he's like is... stretchy and whatnot. It's like a stretch Armstrong. So this is for all the junior inflation fetishists out there who don't know what that is, but soon will. <laughs> does it does it at least sound like Idris Elba when I when I touch the back? Does it sound like him? <laughs> It, it has a British accent, but it has the wrong sort of British accent. Oh, I'm fucking Knuckles, ain't I? <laughs> Auto chuckle. Whatever. Luther. <laughs> I imagine that's what it does. Wow. the It's the teeth, you know? I, I really don't like knowing that Sonic characters have teeth. I'll say that right now. Yeah, they, they, it looks pretty weird, doesn't it? <laughs> it really does. The, ch the chat, my boy, they massacred my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they did. All right, what uh, what else do you have, Matt? Is it equally as nightmarish as this? Because you're you're coming out strong. You're coming out swinging this year. It's not, but it it is uh it is it is quite funny. <laughs> All right, let's see this. Yeah, as the chat says too, nipples the echidna. Yeah. Oh, super escort girls. Oh my god. <laughs> the premier superhero team. <laughs> Wow, wow. Okay, so they took Garth Ennis's idea for the pro and took that to the next level, huh? <laughs> so this this is from a company, Le Pen, which that I'm assuming that's Chinese, maybe even Taiwanese writing up there. I, I assume so, yeah. So this is clearly some black market friggin' Chinese Lego ripoffs here where they did not understand superhero girls. They just got that all wrong. <laughs> Wow. Well, Matt, I think I have the title for our brand new indie comic we're going to start. <laughs> Super Escort Girls. <laughs> yeah, I, I've joked before, why aren't there more sex worker superheroes? They tried it with Voodoo in the New 52, and it just did not work. But, you know, this this one will work, though. This one will work. <laughs> Can you imagine the sad child who got this one? <laughs> and I bet because it's, like, bootleg Lego, like, the Lego pieces still have, like, mold lines and, like, oh, yeah. don't fit well together. No doubt. I at least everything in here looks DC related. They fucked up the titling, but all of this at least looks DC related. Yeah, yeah. Now, I don't know if it's like that when you open the package. That's the thing. I kind of want to open the package to see what's inside this <laughs> one. The chat, Le Pen is mightier than Le Sword. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but not mighty as Le Go. <laughs> The chat, I think, uh, Super Escort Girls uh, advertises on Twitter. <laughs> okay, now we're on to the next one. Action MC. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's probably what Ronald McDonald would look like if he was on an all-McDonald's diet. I mean, it's and, truth and advertising. And he comes with his own kill dozer. Yeah, what? yeah I'm glad you mentioned that. Why does Ronald McDonald need a kill dozer? Because he's... He's tired of these fucking people in his town picking on him. So he's going he's gonna to take it out on someone. Yeah, he's, he's not going to be a victim of the old boys network anymore. You know, he's going to fucking build a yuppie killdozer and no one's going to catch him. And then they'll make a documentary about what a entitled piece of shit he was. Wow. 
Wow. This this almost looks like they're like they're actively making fun of McDonald's. Like this almost looks like one of those protest pieces you would see. Yeah, yeah. Even the art in the lower right corner is fucked up. Yep. Wow, you know, when you push this, you know, this is Ronald now. They've replaced Ronald because we don't see him in the commercials anymore for Happy Meals. We just see the little animated Happy Meal. This is what's become of Ronald McDonald. <laughs> he can't even use the name because that's copyrighted. So now he has to be Action MC. <laughs> it's it's his old independent wrestling name he had to bring back yeah yeah for, for, for legal reasons like he couldn't go under the name ronald mcdonald anymore yeah he had to change it <laughs> robot of the sea uh, why does ronald need a kill dozer because the burger king deserves what's coming to him <laughs> man man the fast food wars are really heating up right now i tell you what <laughs> they're getting serious okay we got goof Oof. No, it's goof and then e and like like oh. an, an e at the end. <laughs> well, well, you know, I, I made a joke about wrestling and how when you get fired by the WWE, they own your name, so you need to go by something that sounds similar. That's clearly what happened here. Yeah. <laughs> this is Goofy working the shitty indies for a hot dog and a handshake. Yes, he'll bleed. Yes, he'll go through flaming tables. He needs the money. He's got three ex wives and a coke addiction. <laughs> That shit's not going to pay himself. You know, Jake the Snake is, you know, mentoring him now. He's watching his money for him. <laughs> By that, I mean he's buying crack. He'll only do the show for $50 now and crack on top of what you're going to pay him. <laughs> so, yes, you, the promoter, need to go find crack. <laughs> That's not a joke either. That's actually what Jake the Snake was doing when he was the most fucked up. Oh, I'll no. come to your indie show in your town, but I need $50 and crack right now or it's not going to happen. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, he's better now, thankfully, <laughs> but still, that's some real oof, oof. Also, I don't remember Goofy being this muscly, do you? No, though we never really saw him without a shirt, so who knows? Fair enough, you know, he might be, he might be jacked, he might have those Disney cum gutters, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, clearly he's procreated with a woman, that's why Max exists. <laughs> No, he, also, he, did it, he did it through, like, like cell division. Like, he oh, actually just, like, yeah. grew out of his stomach. There you go. All right, now we have Apple Jones 5S. <laughs> but then we have Iron Man down on the bottom, so what the hell is this supposed to be? <laughs> wow, there is just so much copyright infringement on this. Uh, it's fine. They've, cha they've changed enough. You know what this is? This is like when John Constantine sells his soul to three different demons because he knows they're all going to fight over each other <laughs> and kill each other and he'll never have to pay anyone back. This is like that. If we commit enough copyright infringement, no one can sue us because they'll all trip over themselves trying to get to us. <laughs> That's what this is. This is the toy version of that. The irony, too, is it's not even a bad Iron Man, all things considered. It's like a pretty... I mean, it's probably made of, like, really cheap plastic. The minute you touch no it, doubt. it just, like, disintegrates. But, like, like overall, like, it looks all right. Yeah. Again, it, it feels like it could be a silver century. You know what it is? I bet it's that, like, really cheap plastic that, like, mm. smells bad, is, like, sticky, and, like, it's it hollow. always is absorbed. It's hollow. Yeah. And it's held to get together by, like, pegs. Yeah, and it's, like, always absorbing your finger grease whenever you put it mm. on. It always leaves a stain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we always had toys like that. Either that or this is from, like, an alternate universe where Stark spent his money to, like, buy Apple and just said, you know what, screw it. I, I like the Apple logo better than my Arc React. I'm just going to take that. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have uh, what looks to be a Bumblebee Transformers costume. No, but, that's uh, Trans Boy. That's the, the famous, iconic Transformers Trans Boy. You know what? I'm I'm glad he's finally being honest with himself, Bumblebee. I'm glad he's finally out now. He's finally living his truth. And we support him and that the Transformers say trans rights. <laughs> Absolutely. Good 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 on you, Bumblebee. I always I always had a feeling about you. You you have cracked your egg, as they say, on the internet, and now now you're living true. I I hear he's gonna be a judge actually, a uh, trans boy, uh, over on RuPaul this season, I've heard. It's gonna be great. <laughs> It's gonna be great it's gonna be really great gonna be doing the podcast circuit can't wait <laughs> <laughs> now this next one is actually like tangentially related to you oh shit is it really okay this will be interesting <laughs> in the bootleg joel <laughs> Oh no, holy shit really <laughs> is, is that what happened with that cape joel merchandise <laughs> 
Is, is, is that what happened? That, you know, company from Bangladesh said that they were totally legit. <laughs> and yes, as the chat is saying, Transformers has had trans characters. It's yes. Oh, oh, bootleg Chinese Bobby Hill phone cases. <laughs> oh, man. I'm leaving so much money on the table. They, they, they told me they were legit. They told me I'd get my cut from these. <laughs> now, I really want to know what they actually say. <laughs> Right again. Hey, in the chat, do any of you speak Chinese? If so, I'm assuming Chinese. I know, like one of them says, like study makes me happy because there's like chi there's like English underneath them, but I can't read some. Ah, uh, yes, yes, because that's a popular thing in the Asian world to misuse English phrases. Which I mean, turnabout's fair play. Because how many douchebags here do you know with like kanji tattoos that don't mean what they think they mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, these these are great too because these are clearly not just any pictures of Bobby Hill. These are all clearly popular memes that they picked up. Like they're like, okay, what's the most searched images of Bobby Hill? We'll grab those, and that's what our phone cases will be. Yeah, yeah. These these are all meme pictures, and again, it, it, is it bad that I know every episode that these came from? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you were in it, so yeah. I mean, it, it is based on my real life, is the thing, you know. <laughs> I also got screwed over by the network. I didn't make a goddamn cent off any of these. <laughs> That's why I had to change my name to Joel, because, you know, likeness rights. <laughs> Ooh, Star Warsiers? Is it, it's supposed to be Warriors, but they spelt that wrong. I, yeah, I think so, yeah. Holy shit. With such favorite characters as Karate Farmer, Wise Puppet, and Door Ladder. Yeah, the iconic Door Ladder. Uh, I mean, yeah, I really hate what they did to door ladder you know in the new disney era i mean you know they really they, they really betrayed the whole heart of the character i would say not not my door ladder not anymore <laughs> you know they had to change his name to the mandalorian <laughs> it was much better when he was just door ladder okay let's, let's talk about this yoda for a second that is that's clearly a, a head from another toy that they just put on right it looks like familiar but i can't place like whose face that is right that's driving me crazy is that is it like a gi joe with like big ears or no is it a spock with the ears or something like that did they put a spock on there maybe it's something yeah yoda's twice removed cousin wise puppet <laughs> it looks like green yogurt from space balls this looks worse than space balls and the joke is that space balls is supposed to look bad yeah yeah Ugh, this is Yoda after the divorce. <laughs> oh, now we got some Family Guy bullshit. Nice. Yeah, so this is, this is uh, actually packaging for underwear. And, oh, boxer and, shorts. And the underwear is called a comfortable fat guy underwear. <laughs> I mean, we could all use some of those, I think, especially this time of year. You know, when I was a child, I hated getting comfortable fat guy underwear. But now that I'm an adult, you know, it's it's just really nice. You know, I like to have a Christmas and outfit. It's cool because it's 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 fashion, it's personality, yes. it's energy karaoke, it's mm -hmm. self confidence and sexy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I imagine that all sounded much better in the original Japanese. These are also four XL too, but it's four XL in Asian sizes, which you usually need to add to on top of that. So it's yeah. really just regular XL. <laughs> Oh, uh, they're saying that this is the Chinese actor, the Chinese Family Guy counterpart, Fat Dad. <laughs> Fat Dad. <laughs> he was Fat just, Dad. He was just he was just putting Fortnite, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's sexy, Fat Dad, which makes no sense. <laughs> relative dude says the chat. Ah, yes, <laughs> relative dude. <laughs> ah, yes, gr great American animated series, relative dude. Relative dude. <laughs> oh. Okay, what's that? That's, uh... I, I can't quite read that. Is that it, Brooklyn? Is that what that's trying it, to say? It says... I think it says Broken Bones. It, or, like, Broke Bones. Oh, okay. The, the classic Dan Slot-created character, Broke Bones. <laughs> He's really proud of Broke Bones and is gonna, you know, derail this uh, Superior Spider-Man book to tell you all about <laughs> Broke Bones. <laughs> He, he really hates that you didn't like Alpha and Spider-Boy, so now he's back with Broke Bones. <laughs> that, that is, admittedly, though, a pretty fair, you know, uh, description of Spider-Man, Peter Parker. Yeah. He is Broke Bones. He is Broke Bones, yeah. In the Infinite Spider-Verse, though, there is a chance that Broke Bones will exist somewhere out there. But, but, but not really, though. 
<laughs> he's in some of the bigger shots, you know, in the back, behind the Japanese Megazord, Spider-Man, behind <laughs> Spiders, man. He's behind there in the back. <laughs> The chat saying, I thought it said broken legs. Again, the, the font is very disconcerting on this. It's very hard to read. Also, it, is. it just came. That's the Borderlands font. Is it? That's that's the Borderland 1's font. It just hit me now. I can't believe you recognized that font. I can't either. I had a total nom flashback moment there. I'm like, that's the Borderlands font. <laughs> because, again, Borderlands goes that way, too. But, like, with the cel-shaded art style, it makes more sense, and you can read it more clearly. Okay. Oh, oh, here's a winner here. The American! I, I love this show. <laughs> you know, it really dropped off in a couple seasons, but, you know, like, seasons three to nine of the americans you know are just you know, some of the greatest comedy ever etched in my mind i can quote it off and i mean you get all the americans here you get bort you get liza you get merge, <laughs> merge. baby <laughs> merge yeah uh, fat dad too you know it's all here <laughs> you get all the characters <laughs> <laughs> oh god also he's not that fat dad honestly homer's actually looking pretty slim on this one yeah yeah Again, these are nightmarish copies, but they're actually much closer and on model than other stuff, you would think. Yeah, yeah, they're not too bad. Oh, as the chat brings up, they're using the old Simpson artwork. Yes, this yes. is like season one Simpson artwork mm -hmm. when they still hadn't quite hammered it out yet. Yep. The only thing we're missing is blue shirt Bart, because Bart had a blue shirt very early on. Yeah, th this is bought, though. Bort, yeah, you know, Bort, you know, people don't understand that Bart actually stole the orange shirt from Bort of the Americans. <laughs> also, uh, Graggle is in this, too. Yes, yes, he's, he's a special figure that you can buy, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a collective figure thing. You need to get all the Americans with a little <laughs> piece, and then you put it together. <laughs> no, you know, it's, it, it's an Amazon exclusive uh graggle that's the thing they, they they really fuck over smaller toy stores amazon and walmart where you like have to go in there have to get to, your yeah. special graggle figure Ugh, i mean you know that's that, that's just the problem with the industry yeah right. you know yeah yeah again don't d don't paywall my graggle simpson <laughs> of the americans <laughs> uh now this next one this one is a bootleg but it's a high-end bootleg no i like these and bootlegs are interesting because not, not all bootlegs are bad and nightmare no. some can actually surprise you yeah yeah at their quality sometimes you know you're shocked at the workmanship but oh it's a uh, what's that the revenger that's clearly based on the punisher warzone punisher yes yes <laughs> Wow, I have never seen a hot toy ripoff before. Clearly, that's what they're going for here. They want to be a hot toy ripoff. There, there's a whole, like, uh, like genre of them, basically, yeah. Yeah, this is not bad at all. I can tell who it is. The guns actually look like the guns from the PS2 Punisher game, hilariously enough. <laughs> and that is that is just clearly Ray Stevenson, may he rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, now, I, I've actually looked at, like, I actually looked at some of these not too long ago, in t like, just to see, like, how they looked and, like, price-wise. And, like, mm. I'd, I'd buy one of them. I'd buy them, yeah. Yeah, it's not terrible. You can tell what it is by looking at it. Yeah. And also, the skull, too, looks very close to that skull. And as we've seen time and time again with all the dirty cops and January 6 people who love the goddamn Punisher skull logo, you can just do whatever you want with it. And Marvel won't sue you or come after you in anything. You can just yeah. use it in any context you want. Yeah, exactly. You're free to use it whatever you want. For whatever you want, which, again, that's why I think we really need to write our Punisher story, Punisher Pride and Punishment, <laughs> where he puts it on a gay pride shirt. <laughs> Night out spider. Oh man, he is going out for a night out on the town, isn't he? Oh, oh man, he's got he's got his dancing coat on. Oh man, he's gonna be getting all the honeys tonight. Yeah. I I never thought Spider Man would be a trench coat kid, and yet here we are. Yeah. I think this is just like a recolor of the the Marvel's Avengers game uh, version of Spider Man No Wow. Mm, okay yeah because why else would he have a coat yeah i see it yeah again it's not bad it actually feels like it could be an alternate universe spider-man yeah right? pretty drippy as the chat says the coat is kind of pimp like yeah. I, I i i cannot argue with it it's spider-man going out on a night on the town you know and he wants people looking at him he's dressing it's not bad yeah 
No. Again, this Scarlet Speedster, also not too bad. Clearly ripping off the uh, early season TV show version, mm-hmm. but not bad. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, it looks exactly like the, the, the TV version. Mm-hmm. Also, I'm shocked they can use the word Scarlet Speedster. Like, that's not also copyrighted. That's, yeah, that's true. Again, you would think they would get in trouble for that. You know what they should have done? They should have spelled it with three E's. Scarlet Speedster. <laughs> Or Red Running Man. Come on, guys. This, if, if you're going to bootleg, at least bootleg right. Bootleg yeah, yeah, properly, chub- yeah. <laughs> yeah, ch- yeah, chubby Grant Gustin. That's the only thing that's wrong with this. He's looking a little little soft around the midsection, the Flash. He's been having too many big belly burgers. <laughs> oh, now this one looks great. Judge Justice, the Judge Dredd ripoff. This one looks really good. I'm trying to find like a close-up of the head because if you zoom in a lot, like the head like doesn't look like Sylvester Stallone at all but I no. suppose you'll have like the helmet on it so yeah yeah this is clearly modeled after the Stallone movie but yeah the helmet's not bad the chest piece and everything else this is mostly okay for a ripoff mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I am shocked at the quality of this one actually like that's if you dress it up and put it on a shelf I wouldn't be able to tell the difference yeah yeah it, it looks pretty good even the name isn't too bad either. Justice Judge for a ripoff of Judge Dredd. <laughs> Again, that feels like something that would show up in The Boys at some point, right? Oh, no, it's Justice Judge, oh, no. right? Oh, no. You've been found guilty. <laughs> yeah, I, I am genuinely shocked how much I actually like this ripoff. That's actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, not all ripoffs are bad. Like they say, you know, the thing is known good ripoffs and bad. Wasteland Ranger. Ah, yes. Angry Matthew. <laughs> Angry Matthew, the Street Fighter. Oh, no, wait. We can't have Street Fighter. Uh, that's too close to Road Warrior. The, 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 blo- the Block Brawler. There you go. Angry Matthew, the Block Brawler. The Path Soldier. Mm, there you go. <laughs> Fighting his great and terrible enemies, Long Living Joseph. <laughs> And uh, the other one there, uh, pretty furious. <laughs> I actually found like a a a, a, um, a bootleg Furiosa. I didn't include it because it just it looked too good. Oh really? It's just too fucking accurate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do they make a lot of Mad Max figures? Because I feel like I've they never don't. really I... seen them. No. No, even after the movie. And that's, that's why like I included this one because I'm like, wow, I've, that's like the first like um, Mad Max figure I've ever seen. It's, it's probably because George Miller owns the whole thing lock, stock, and barrel, and because he's an actual real artist. Like, why aren't there Judge Dredd comics? There were during the movie, and they were fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. There was that one really underrated game, and why aren't there more figures? Yeah. Like, okay, here, I'm be- I'm here on BigBadToyStore.com. They have four Funko Pops of the most popular oh, characters. Funko Pops. And that's it for Mad Max figures. Yeah. What a fucking travesty. Come on, George Miller. Merchandise. That's yeah. what it's all about. You gotta merchandise these things. Ha- no, Hasbro yeah, should be putting out figures, putting out, like, vehicles. Oh my god, yes. Build your own Mad Max vehicle? How is that yeah. not, like, a the thing? The Interceptor. Oh my god. See, that's the problem with George Miller. He's too much of an artist and he loves cinema too much. <laughs> Ugh, what a jerk. <laughs> Loving cinema in his old age and being filled with joy and wonder. Just push plastic. Come on. <laughs> I want a goddamn Mad Max figure. <laughs> but I can get a Wasteland Ranger, apparently, that's pretty goddamn close. That's pretty goddamn close, yeah. <laughs> pretty goddamn close. God. And, you know, it's, totally, it's a Tom Hardy head, but a Tom Hardy head from a totally different movie. Yeah, probably like a, I don't know, like a Venom one or something. Yeah, something like that. That's the only problem with it. It looks like him, but it's not quite. Uh, <laughs> is, uh, is is that it, Matt? Is that everything you got? That's everything I got, yeah. Wow, holy shit. And we're actually done about the time we're normally done an episode. Yeah, yeah, good timing. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we wanted to do uh, some riffs of some Christmas stuff because I collected a lot of crap last year, but I don't know if Matt will be able to run the back end on that because he's got like six goddamn windows open already. Yeah, it's already... very, very uh, finicky. 
yes, and we're already struggling with time sinks, and also, even though it was totally fine for me to play that stuff on Twitch for, like, eight hours last year, I don't want to risk fucking up Matt's channel <laughs> just so we can watch the goddamn Christmas trolls and a cranberry Christmas and all the other <laughs> garbage I've collected. If if I have some free time in the house to myself, maybe I will jump on and do some of those. Nice. Is what nice. I will try and do. But, uh, yeah, I think that was a very fun episode. I hope everyone enjoyed that. Again, if you're listening to this on Christmas, be sure to let us know down in the comment section below because it always makes my day to know that we actually made someone's holiday a little brighter. Maybe, you know, you need something to listen to in the background while you wrap some last-minute gifts. Maybe you need something to pop into your ears at dinner so you don't have to listen to the most annoying member of your family. It's okay. You don't, you, you don't have to tell them that's okay. That's just between you and me and the wall. <laughs> But yeah, thank you everyone for coming out. This will be our last show of 2023. We'll be back again 2024. Matt and I honestly need the time off just to do our own yeah. shit and to catch up. So be sure to keep your eyes peeled to both our channels. Uh, I Like I said, I'm back on TikTok now. It's Kate Joel one word 2.0. Find me there if you're interested in some shorter content, some stuff that you know probably wouldn't work on the channel. Uh, me and Sal from Comic Pop did our early best of the year list. We'll probably do one on this show too, you know, because that's always mm, fun. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, oh, I also co writ Johnny Two Cello's new video on Blue Eye Samurai. Go check that out. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I, I, I was actually probably more rewritten on this one because he had some very strong thoughts about the show too, but some of my best stuff did actually make it into the final cut. So awesome. go watch it and try, and try and see if you can find out what parts are me. <laughs> It's a fun game, I tell you. But no, J J Johnny makes really good videos, actually, and I'm glad to be part of that machine over there, co-writing stuff. Because originally, I uh, I wanted to be an animation YouTuber, but got popular doing comics, so completely uh, ended up changing yeah, lanes. Well, it's good to go back to that. Yeah, in an alternate universe, I'd be making videos like that. That's why I like Johnny's videos. I'm like, oh shit, this is what I would be making. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so uh, a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, Feliz Navidad to everyone out there who celebrates. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you to the patrons who give whatever they can to help keep the lights on. Thank you to everyone uh, from me and Matt, from our families to yours. And uh, we'll be back again next time, everyone. Yes. Merry Christmas, everyone, and goodbye. Bye-bye.